Hi, my name's Andy. Um, this is a talk on the very basics of Scheme. So, uh, if you've seen the Scheme, the feel, scheme feel the Cool video, uh, you'll understand why you should be excited about Scheme. And if you haven't, maybe you should watch it. Uh, but this is the, uh, the first video where we get into some of the, the details you need to understand to actually write programs in Scheme. So we're going to look at um, how you make pairs and how you make lists which are made out of pairs. Um, then we're going to look at how you would do what you would normally call a loop um, in Scheme, which would be different. Um, we're going to look at two special procedures called map and fold, which are very important in writing uh, Scheme programs and other functional programs. Um, so we'll start off with pairs. So there is a procedure in Scheme, and this is how you call a procedure in Scheme. Um, you have an open bracket, and then the name of the procedure which in this case is cons, uh, and then any arguments to that procedure separated by spaces, and then you have a closed bracket. What that means is call this procedure. Uh, procedure is like a function. Call this function. Uh, the function is called cons, and what the function does is make a pair. And when you type this into the scheme interpreter, the scheme interpreter will respond like this. Um, bracket 1 dot 2 bracket, which means a pair of 1 and 2. So it's done what you told it to. Um, we can also nest these things. So here, um, there's two things going on. We've got outside, we've got a pair of brackets uh, to call the const function. But then the first argument that we're passing to the const function is also the result of calling a function. Uh, so we're going to call const 1, 2, and that's going to be the left-hand side of a pair. And then we're going to const that with 3 to make uh, a second pair. So when we do that, the scheme interpreter is going to respond with a pair of 1 and 2 uh, paired with 3. And that's what that means. Um, in Scheme, you can define symbols. So here, we're using the define procedure, which defines the symbol. Um, this, the name of the symbol is foo. And what the value of the symbol is going to be, what, uh, what's behind the symbol when you use it, is going to be a pair of 1 and 2, which we make by using this cons function, cons 1, 2. So when, we, when you uh, define something, the interpreter doesn't respond with anything. But then when you ask the interpreter uh, for the value of foo, which is what we're doing here, if you type that into the um, scheme interpreter, then you get back the answer, this value that we put in on the line above. Uh, there's a special function uh, called car. So the cons function makes a pair, and car gets the first thing out of the pair. So you should be able to predict. If we ask for the car of foo, we get back one. There's another special function called kudder, and that gets back the second thing in the pair. So in this case, you should be able to predict the answer to that is two. Um, the names of these functions are a bit weird. Uh, const kind of sticks two things together. Um, car gets the first one out, kudder gets the second one out. Um, if it helps you, uh, car is earlier in the alphabet than kudder, so. Uh, um, it, that might help you remember that it gets the first thing out and Kudur gets the second thing out. Um, the, the reason for these names is kind of a historical accident, um, but they've stuck because you can pronounce them. There are more complicated versions of them which you can kind of pronounce uh, and things. Um, so they do serve some purpose. Okay, so let's talk about lists. Well, why am I starting the slide about lists? By showing you a pair. Well, hopefully it will become clear. Um, so we're calling the const function. Uh, we're passing it an argument of 1 and another argument of this special thing called null. And the interpreter responds to you when you type that in with just this, bracket 1 bracket. So what does that mean? Well, that is scheme interpreter talk for a list which only has one thing in and that thing is 1. Um, so that's odd, right? We made a pair. Why have we got back a list? Well, let's have a bit more of a look at this. Um, let's define a symbol called bar, and let's define it to be the result of consting one with null. And then if we ask what bar is, we get back uh, a list containing only one again. So now let's ask what the first thing in the pair that is bar is. So hang on, I thought bar was a list, but well, you said it was a pair. So we made it by making a pair. So let's ask for what the first thing in the pair is. Well, the first thing is 1. 
Let's ask what the kudder of bar is. What's the second thing in the pair? Well, the second thing is bracket bracket, which is another way of saying null. Okay, so we'll get into exactly why later. But basically, what the interpreter is telling you there is that you made this thing called bar, which was a pair of one and null. It is indeed a pair of one and null, um, but it but the way the uh, scheme interpreter writes that is a list containing only one. And the reason for that is that the definition of a list is a set of pairs and the last pair in that um, collection of pairs um, has null on the right hand side. So by by making a pair with null on the right hand side you made a little list. Uh, yeah, so this special symbol null, when you ask the interpreter what that is, it tells you it's bracket bracket. So um, that's uh, what that means is really is the empty list. Um, which hopefully will make more sense soon. Okay, so let's go a bit further. Let's const two with null, and then let's const one with that. So um, we've got a pair. What we get out of that is that a pair that um, with a one in it and a pair of two and null. And the way the scheme interpreter writes that is a list of one and two. And the reason for this is because what we've done there is we've manually constructed this uh, this data structure, which we call a list. But really, it's a bunch of pairs cascading down and ending in null. So we can do it even more. So if we have, if we const three with null, that makes a little list with just three in. But then if we put that into a pair with two on the left, that makes a list of two and three. And if we put that into a pair with one on the left, that makes a, a list of one, two, and three. So all I'm saying really is this is the definition of a list. It's a bunch of pairs stuck together. And uh, there is a special way. Um, that the scheme interpreter chooses to write that because it would be inconvenient um, always to show it as a whole load of pairs when normally when you're dealing with it you like to think of it as a list but really underneath it is a bunch of pairs <laughs> excuse me so let's put all that um, stuff into uh, a symbol called my list we'll ask what my list is it's one two three uh, so what's the first thing in my list well remember my list is a pair uh, it's a pair of one and some other stuff so when we ask what the first thing in my list is, um, we'll get back one. And now when we ask what the second thing in my list is, well, we'll get all the rest of the stuff. But all the rest of the stuff is actually a list itself. So when we ask for the second half, we get two, three, a list of two, three. There are some uh, more complicated uh, operators you can use. There's this thing called CADR. And the way to look at these things, you can have lots of A's and D's between that C and that R. Um, the way to look at them is to start reading on the right, so you hit a D first, you skip the R, and then you hit a D, um, and that means do a kudu, and then do a car. So you, um, you, uh, having looked at the previous example, that m it might be clear to you why that's useful. Um, if you want to navigate through a list and get down to, say, the fourth thing in the list, you need to do a bunch of kudurs to get these smaller and smaller lists, and then a car to get the first thing on that list, and then you've got a thing, not a list. So the cadre of my list is um, take the sublist, um, the right-hand side, which is a list of two, three, and then take the first thing in that list, which is two. So we're, so now you ought to be able to predict what cadre is um, of my list. Well, we take the cadre twice, so we end up with a list of size uh, which contains only three, and then we take the car of that, which gives us back three, in the front of the list. So, um, in the scheme feel the call video, uh, you saw a function called a procedure called list, which built a list of out of its arguments. Um, so here we're calling that procedure uh, with list one two three. So that makes a list, and we're asking is that equal to this thing we made by building up pairs? And when you ask the scheme interpreter that question, it responds with hash t, which means true, as in yes. So yes, the list procedure um, does exactly the same thing as what we've done manually in building my list. It makes a load of pairs. And the definition of a list is pairs which have this certain structure, uh, which go off to the right and end in null. So there's a function which is going to be useful for you when you're dealing with lists. This function is called listRef. So here we're making a list uh, which contains the values a, b, and c. And we're calling the listRef function, passing in that list, and also passing in the number one, which means get the second thing out of the list, because we always start counting at zero, like in any sane world. So 
what's the second thing in that list? It's B. And now if we ask for the third thing in that list, you should be able to predict the answer. The answer is C. So that's a function called listref. There are a whole load of functions which you can use to work uh, with lists in Scheme. Um, this one is of interest to us because I'm going to talk about how you do things that are a bit like loops in Scheme. Uh, and how I'm going to talk about that is I'm going to talk about how we might implement listref. Um, we're going to write a really, really bad implementation of it. Um, so in an ordinary programming language, or one that I'm certainly more familiar with, um, if I had a list of things and I wanted to get the nth one out, uh, the way I'd implement that is with a loop. Um, I'd loop through them until I got to um, the place I wanted to be and then return it. Or in actual fact, if it was a, an array or something, I would just index into it. But um, Let's imagine we can't do that. Let's imagine we've got a linked list or something. So, uh, this is how I would implement, really, really badly, um, uh, listref. So, here I'm defining a procedure. So, if you haven't seen this before, perhaps you skipped over the Feel the Cool video because you already knew that Scheme was cool. Um, there, is, um, there are two ways of using the define procedure. We've already seen one, which defines uh, a symbol to be whatever comes after it. Um, and that was just define, and then the name of the symbol, and then the value. Here, we're saying define and then open bracket, and we're providing some stuff between brackets, and then some more stuff. So when we do that, what that means is I'm defining a procedure, not just a symbol which has a value, but a procedure which can be called. So here, I'm defining a procedure called my list ref, and the next two things within the brackets are the um, arguments to that procedure. So it's called my list ref, and it takes an argument called lust, and another argument called n. And lust is expected to be a list, and n is how far through that list you want to go um, and then return the, uh, the item at that point. So the next line is, the, um, is the, the body of this function. So the body of this function is a single if expression. So what we're saying is if, and then immediately after if we put the uh, condition we're evaluating. So if 0n, which means if n is 0, then we do the next thing we come to. Otherwise, we do the thing after that. So if n is 0, we do this car lust. Otherwise, we do the next line. So car lust means take the first thing in the list. So basically, if you ask for the zeroth element um, in a list, i.e. the first thing, um, then return the car, which is the first thing. So that makes sense, right? Uh, and then the second half, um, we're calling a procedure, my list ref, and we're passing in two arguments. So the first thing to notice here is that the procedure we're calling is the procedure we're in. So this is a recursive call. Uh, if you haven't seen that before, you're going to need to pause this video and look at this for a long time and perhaps Google for recursive um, stuff in a language you're more familiar with. Um, but basically, we're calling this uh, procedure recursively, which means call the same function but with different arguments. And the arguments we're passing are the CUDA of list and this structure minus n1, which means 1 less than n. It means n minus 1. So the second argument's easy, right? We, we're calling um, the same function, same procedure we started with, um, with n one less. So eventually we'll get to zero, so you can be confident that this, this will end, assuming we started with a positive n. Um, and the first argument is the rest of the list. Could or, when you give when you give it a list, gives you the rest of the list, as you've seen. So what that means is clip the first thing off the list, and reduce n by 1. So if you think about that, you ought to be able to work out that eventually, um, if we keep doing this, when, when n gets to 0, we'll be at the part of the list we want, and we can do car and get the, the first element, and that's the correct answer. And below you can see a little demonstration there, just for my own benefit really, that this my list ref procedure that I wrote um, does work. You get back b when you ask for number 1. So that is how you write code that works a bit like a loop uh, would in an, another programming language. Um, you're always navigating through lists. You're always dealing with uh, uh, the first thing in the, doing something with the first thing in the list and then passing on the rest of the list, um, often to a recursive call for the same procedure. So let's have a look at uh, another function, uh, which is very important uh, when you're writing code like this. It's called map. So let's begin by defining a symbol called Baz, 
and what we're going to put into that symbol is a list of the numbers 1, 2 and 3. So we define it. Um, we're also going to define a procedure called double. And uh, what that does is returns the result of multiplying the argument it's given, x, by 2. Uh, and then we're going to call the procedure map. This is a built-in procedure in Scheme. Uh, and what it does is it applies the function you give it um, to the list that you give it, uh, to each element of the list you give it, and it returns a list with all that stuff in. Notice how easy it is to pass a function uh, to a function, or a procedure to a procedure in Scheme. This, uh, the first argument uh, that we're giving to map there, double, that is the name of a procedure. You can pass that in exactly the same way uh, you can pass a number or anything else to a procedure. Obviously the procedure has to uh, know how to deal with a, a procedure passed as its argument, uh, but this one does. So when we tell, uh, we call the map procedure and pass in double, what we're saying is make me a list of uh, all the things in BAS um, with the double function applied to them. So you can see the answer is 246. Um, and just to make the point that we can do this infinitely, we can give names to anything and therefore abstract ourselves from having to know about them. Um, let's give uh, the procedure of mapping and doubling a name, let's call it double all. It takes in a thing called x, which is expected to be a list. And what it does is it, uh, it does exactly what we did above. So now we've just got one function called double all, which does the same job. Um, again, doubles everything in that list. That's just to make the point that you can uh, you can give anything a name, even some kind of compound structure like that. So you can you can go on abstracting um, and, and until you reach the level where you want to work with the particular problem you're working with. Okay, so here's a question. How would we implement map? Well, this is going to be another good example that's going to help us understand uh, the way recursive procedures work in Scheme. So here is my very bad, probably, uh, implementation of a map procedure. I've called it my map. It takes in two arguments. It takes in an argument called fun and an argument called lust. Um, it asks the question if... So the whole procedure body is an if expression. So if lust is null, that means if, the, if that null procedure returns true um, when given list, uh, then we return null. So what does this mean? Well, really this is what, um, what happens when you get to the end of the list. If you um, remember from the beginning, the end of a list, the right-hand side of the last pair in a list the right hand side of the right hand side of the right hand side of all those pairs is going to be this thing called null. So this null question mark um, procedure checks whether the thing is null or not and if it is null we're going to return null as well. So what that means is when we get past an empty list um, we're going to return an empty list uh, but also when we get to the end of our recursive procedures uh, the last thing we're going to hit is the empty list so we're going to return an empty list which means I've got to the end of my output list as well. Okay, so that's enough waffle about that. The second part of this if is the more interesting part. So what we do here is we, we call the const procedure and we give it two arguments. The first argument is the result of calling fun on the car of the list. So the car of the list is the first thing in the list. Uh, so we're calling the function on the first thing in the list and we're making a pair with that on the left. And then on the right of this pair that we're returning is the result of calling my map, which is the function we're in, uh, and the arguments that we're passing to my map are the function we were given, completely unchanged, and the rest of the list. Kudder is everything in the list except for the first thing. Uh, it's another list which is everything except the first thing. Um, so we're calling the function on the first thing and we're passing on the rest of the list to a recursive call to this function. Uh, so this function will, um, that recursive call will eventually, after lots of other recursive calls, come back with a short list with all uh, all those items with function having been applied to them, we then apply function to the first thing in the list and const it together to make a new list which is which has got that thing on the front, and we return that and you you go recurse all the way back up the chain and you end up um, with a function that works as I've demonstrated there at the bottom when you call my map and you pass in double and baz you get two four six. So let's have a look at another function which is very important in. Uh, um, writing recursive, uh, writing functional code. Uh, okay, so let's define a symbol, let's call it quox, and let's make it a list which contains the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then let's call this folder procedure, and this takes three arguments. So it takes in a function, and in this case the function we're passing in is plus, because plus is just a function, just like everything else. 
and a starting value which is zero and a list so we're passing in quotes so what we get when we call that it's a single number answer this uh, this procedure folds up the stuff in the list and the way it does that is it starts with zero and then it combines zero with the last thing in the list using the function you passed which in this case is plus so it combines zero with four uh, using plus and so it gets four because four plus zero is four uh, then it combines the result it's got so far with the, the last thing in the remaining list which is three so we get four plus three equals seven you keep combining till you get to the front you end up with ten so you've added up all the numbers in this list so just to make the point about what this start value is for um, well uh, it's quite a neat way to make the procedure work but um, it, it doesn't provide any massively useful extra functionality in this case uh, with a commutative operator like plus uh, which doesn't care which, which order the arguments are given to it uh, but yeah, so if I fold up um, the same list but I start uh, with a start value of 2000, I get 2010. All the other items get added onto it. Um, not very useful here, can be useful and also just makes the procedure make a lot more sense when you, uh, when you get into how it's implemented. So let's, uh, let's try this with times. Let's give it a start value of 1 and then let's uh, times up all the things in the list and you get that answer. Now let's start with a start value of zero, just to make the point. Obviously, you multiply everything by zero, you get zero. So a uh, folder combines together the elements of a list and gives you a single answer. So how do you think you would go about implementing folder? Well, here's my uh, rubbish attempt at it. So here's a procedure called my folder. Um, it takes in a function, it takes in a start value, and it takes in a list. Fun start and list. And it's one big if expression again. So uh, the condition is, if the list is null, then this time we return the start value. So if we've got to the end of the list, we return the start value. So uh, the way to think about this is if the list was empty, you would just get the start value back. Uh, but also, when we get down to the end of the list through our recursive calls, uh, we'll return start. Um, and then the rest of the procedure, if the list is not empty, then the else case is that we call the function that we've been given, fun, and we pass it uh, two arguments. It has to be a two argument function, it's something like plus or times or some other thing that takes two arguments. The first argument is the front of the list, car list, the first thing in the list. And the second argument is the result of calling this function again, passing in the same function we were given, the same start value we were given, and could a list, which is the rest of the list. So we call the function, which is the which is adding things together, and the things we add together are the thing on the front of the list, and the result of adding up all the things, or combining together all the things in the rest of the list. Uh, and as you can see at the bottom there, if you call my uh, my folder, it works the same way as uh, as the one the built-in one in Scheme, at least for these inputs. Uh, so that's really it um, for this video. There's just one more thing to say uh, on that. Um, I've been referring to this thing called Null, but I really, in my heart of hearts, I live in the world of this amazing book called The Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. Um, and in that book, uh, which incidentally is available for free online, uh, do search for it. Um, in that book, they refer to this thing as nil. Um, uh, and in my head, it's called nil. Uh, I'm going to refer to it as null in these uh, videos because uh, then you can run all my examples in MZ Scheme and it works. Uh, if it really bothers you, which it kind of does bother me, you can always run the command I show you there. Define nil, null, and then the problem goes away. And that's it for today.